So we're kind of in that little middle period between the Triple Crown and Saratoga when there's not a ton of big races, although we do have the Stephen Foster card coming up, I believe, at Churchill Downs. So that'll be a lot of good action. Home team report again. I know. I don't, I don't want to pat ourselves on the back too much. But we had at West Point, we had three days in a row with stakes winners. The bar has never done that before, which is hard to do in general because typically stakes were only run on Saturday and Sunday. Right. So we had Vava win the grade three Chicago on Saturday. Sunday was great to see Carson's run, who was a grade one winner last year. Didn't run that great in the Breeders' Cup. Didn't run that great in his first start of the year. Won the tail of the cat stakes. Blew him away down by the Jersey Shore. And then Monday, I was there at Parks. We were 40, 50 deep on a super windy day at Parks. Took over the winner's circle. Once again, we were like 75% of the patrons on a Monday at Parks. And don't look back at all. It was probably my favorite horse in the entire barn. Now has five firsts and five seconds from 12 career starts. Another stakes win for her. Should be PA Breads in the Power by Far stakes. You can see her up at Saratoga next. But the headliner, and not just for West Point, but for the weekend, was Baba. And she is just so rock solid. That race did not set up for her on paper. It's a five-horse field, but the horse inside of her, Society, as we all know, legitimate grade one caliber horse, had the pace advantage. There was no other speed in the race. Now, granted, she was coming off of a long layoff, but Baba kind of had to be taken out of her game a little bit, sent early by Irad to go after Society. They dueled into the stretch, and then Baba just asserted her superiority. She's just nails, and she's just one of those horses, like, she doesn't look like a lot. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't look at her on the racetrack or in the barn and say, wow, that's a superstar grade one winner. But she just shows up every time. Great training job, as always, by Sharita DeVo. And another great stakes win for, as of now, the probable Eclipse Award winner. John, what stood out, stood out to you from the weekend? Well, I, I think the Vava victory, I love alliteration. Vava victory uh, uh, you know, definitely stood out. Um, it was it, Again, it was a great three, so you get tap the brakes a little bit on that. But she has proven everything that needs to be proven as far as what kind of filly she is. She's just a really nice filly, one that anyone would be willing to, to, uh, to want in their barn. Um, and I think she's being managed correctly because you don't always have to go for the top, top money every single time. Sometimes it's important just to keep a horse um, in training, um, focused on what your ultimate goal is, which obviously for her is to go out back to California um, to run in the Breeders' Cup. And, uh, you know, we do it with like Web Slinger and Papilio and other horses where you don't have to hit the, 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 the top horses every single time um, because it does take something out of a horse. So uh, you want to peak at the right time. You want to get them the experience. You want to, as you mentioned, it didn't it didn't shape up on paper the way that that Vava normally likes to, to, to win and, and race. So it showed an extra dimension for her, which is going to be you know paying off in spades down the road if things don't line up exactly perfect. So I thought that was a very important race. Um, I was gravitating also towards the Ohio Derby. Again, another grade three, but a half a million dollar purse. Scratched down the six horses and uh, batten down the son of Tappet. Um, went gate to wire in that one. Junior Alvarado, again, Joe, you and I talk about him, you know, on and off in this show, um, that he is a really rock solid kind of kind of jockey. He's not in the top 10. He's not one where if you said, if you had a horse in the Derby or in the in the Breeders' Cup, uh, you know, who is the top couple of jockeys you could think of? It, Junior Alvarado would not be one of those guys, but all he does is keep winning these races and he does it by forcing the pace. He brought that horse right out of the gate, right from the outside, right to the, you know, right over to the rail. And basically played catch me if you can. Again, Joe, with with all the different things that we do and talk about, um, we forget sometimes Batten Down is a full brother to Taylor Made Stallion, Tacitus. So again, yeah. the Judmont family continues to throw these great horses out there and and great runners. Um, and I think it's just adding value to another Taylor Made Stallion um, every time Batten Down wins a race. That was the second win in a row. He won that Grade Three impressively, and he's a horse that's on the ascend. Um, as uh, as they're entering the second half of the three-year-old campaign. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was such a huge Close Hatches fan. She was one of my favorite Phillies or Mares like the past 20 years or so. So multi-millionaire, was champion older female in 2014. And she's been really good as a broodmare. As you mentioned, yeah. Tacitus, and I do think Tacitus is great value mm -hmm. on that roster yep. with his pedigree. And like people didn't love him because he didn't, he never like, stepped forward and became like a multiple grade one winner, but he ran big in a lot of races and made 3.6 million on the track. So to get a son of Tappet and close hatches, who was a multimillionaire at that price on the Taylor, on the Taylor made stallion roster, I think is, is, is a, is a real bargain. And I think will prove to be one over time and close hatches as a 2023 Philly by uncle Mo and a 2024 Philly by Gunrunner. So 
I think that she's going to have a couple more runners before all is said and done. So that was really great to see. And then something to look forward to. Talking about Sons of Tappet. Exactly. Yeah, great, great transition. (laughs) You want to host? No, no, sir. I like being, I like sitting shotgun. (laughs) (laughs) After 50 shows, let's not, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't break it if any, or don't fix it if it ain't broke, right? Right, exactly. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good transition to Thursday um, at Churchill Downs. Isn't it the second race, Jeff? Race three. Third, race three in your race in three. your program. Post twelve. Right, so it'll be it'll it'll be go off at around six o'clock, five fifty three to be exact on Thursday. Now, depending on when you're watching the show, it may it may have happened already. If so, no spoilers. Don't tell us yeah. what happened in the race. But we've got Sandman, the one point two million dollars son of Tappet who was bought in partnership with St. Elias Stable, DJ Stable, and West Point Thoroughbred, so a real family horse here, uh, is going to make his debut going six furlongs at Churchill Downs, Thursday's Twilight card. He's been really, really impressive so far in the breezes. You obviously don't know until they break from a great a, a gate. He obviously was not you know, done any favors by the draw. He's in the 12 hole. Obviously, actually, West Point has another horse in that race. In the 11 hole, I saw that. <laughs> Not, not great luck at the pill pole, but regardless, this is just a starting point for Sam Mad anyway. I know Mark Cassie has been really high on him so far. And this is, John, we talked about this off air and you can expound on it, but we talked about we, it would be great to see him become a star, obviously, for personal reasons. But it would also be great to see him become a star because he only galloped at the sale. Right. And the only way that we can kind of start to slow down horses at the two year old sales that I in the way that I think a lot of people in and outside of the industry think is necessary is to have some of these horses have a sample size of horses from the, the gallop ups to actually go on and do big things on the racetrack. So I cannot wait to see what he becomes. And yeah, John, what's, uh, what, what's, what's your uh, feeling on that? And, and maybe the potential ramifications if he becomes a nice one. Well, you know, Joe, if he becomes a nice one, obviously from a financial standpoint, it, it looks like it would look like a great investment because he's, he's bred up the wazoo. He's a son of tap it. He looks gorgeous and, and checks all the boxes. Um, it, it's tough to get a horse to win first time out. Number one. Secondly, it's tough to get a horse to win first time out from the 12 hall. Um, I like the fact that it's six furlongs versus five eighths. So at least when he breaks, he's got a little bit more uh, track in front of him to try to save ground and get to the rail. I don't think, all 12 horses are going to run. That's just not the way it usually works, especially with babies. Um, so he may be a little closer uh, to the rail, you know, by the time post time uh, goes off. Uh, but there, there's two main stories here that that, that I'd like to, to talk about. Number one is that how awesome would it be for Vinny Viola, who's one of the partners in the horse, to win this race and also have won the Stanley Cup? Yes, I said it in that order on purpose, Joe, because that's how important this race is. <laughs> No, obviously his horse, you know, his, his, his team won uh, their first Stanley Cup after being up three games to, to nil um, and then uh, getting to the nail biter in in, uh, in game seven and pulling it out. Um, just tremendous victory to win a championship in any sport is is near next to impossible. So the fact that he was able to do it, um, you know, and, and guide that team and, and put the right people in place um, is, is a tremendous tip of the cap. Number one. Um, but number two, and you, you mentioned this before. How awesome would it be for Sandman to win and turn out to be a good horse after galloping in March? Um, and not only so much that that he galloped, which was you know in part of his process, the fact that the Lothan box uh, there was there was a death, and they were they decided to to uh, have a dispersal almost immediately as opposed to doing it over time. So the horse had no training really into it whatsoever, and yet Mark, who's a very pa- Mark Cassie, who's a very patient trainer, took his time with the horse. And Joe, the horse is still ready to run 90 days later. I mean, that that to me, you, you look for signs in horses. And again, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because it's a maiden race. But you look at horses and, you know, I always like to see when a horse jumps up in leaps and bounds faster than he, than he or she should have. Um, normally, if you have a horse that you buy that's galloping in March, that horse is running in October, okay, September or October. So he's already doing things that he shouldn't be doing. Um, because he's he's just that athletic, uh, but on on top of it, I think it shows. I think it would show the industry that you don't have to go in nine and three to be a good horse. You don't have to go in twenty and 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 four um, to to stamp yourself as a prospect. Here's a horse that just galloped, brought seven figures, which that unto itself shows you you know just how impressive he is. We had the partnership together in order to buy the horse. Um, you know, it, it, to pool our resources in order to do it. That's how much we all thought of him. 
So if he goes on and runs well and subsequently has a good summer campaign, I think it really would be a shot in the arm for the industry to, to show that you don't have to be the fastest in March. You don't have to be the fastest in April for the under tax show in order to be a successful horse down the road. Um, and I know there's a lot of consigners that would sigh a, a breath of, uh, you know, a breath of relief in essence of not having to, you know, get these horses that much, you know, ready that much sooner and faster than maybe they should be. Yeah, no, totally. And it would be a slow transition. And obviously you would have to start having more well-bred horses right. do it like Sandman. Like that's one of the reasons that he still sold for so much mm -hmm. is that he was bred so well. If he was by some no-name stallion, he probably would have sold for $12,000 instead of 1.2 million. Obviously he looked terrific, but the pedigree had a big part to do with it. So you're going to have to see some better pedigrees start to gallop. But yes, I think it's an unbelievably interesting case study right. for whether or not it really does behoove the horses to breathe so fast or if it's better to bring them along slowly. Right. I can't wait for it. There'll be an unbelievable way. Sorry, John, I, I see you chopping at the bit. I'm just yeah, no, saying the way to start our fifth, to celebrate our 50th show would be a win on Thursday with Sam. No, no question about it. And, and Joe, I just want to go back to one thing that, that we were talking about. I think you hit the nail on the head. I should have mentioned this. And, and that is, I would love to see the study of horses um, that breeze quickly and how well they do percentage wise compared to ones that breeze average or that that gallop. Um, I don't think there's enough information for the last division that, that we're talking about. But good right. horses can come from anywhere. Good horses have breezed nine and three, nine and four in the racetrack and have gone on to do well. They've breezed fast. They've breezed there have been horses that have breezed in ten and three and have gone on to win graded stake races. And I'm hoping that there's going to be other horses that are going to gallop um at sales that are going to show that they that they don't need to breeze early in order to, to show their athletic uh, athleticism and their and their racing prowess um but a good horse can come from anywhere any sale um under any circumstances i would like to see the numbers to to, to prove it out um and 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 have him be kind of a, the poster child for a galloper that can go on and do well in america we know there's gallopers that do well in europe um, but it'd be nice to see one do well here as well